Okay, what we want to do now is that we want to talk about writing a fraction in lowest terms. Now, when we talk about writing a fraction in lowest terms, you need to understand what the words lowest terms, you need to understand what this phrase means. When we talk about in lowest terms, we're talking about where the numerator and denominator have no common factors. They have no common factors other than one. Lowest terms means the numerator and denominator have no common factors other than one. And here's a fun little higher math phrase for you. To have no common factors other than one is what we call relatively prime. And this is a phrase that we will be using in our class because this is very important and it can save us some time. So relatively prime means that two numbers have no common factors other than one. Okay. So an example of relatively prime numbers would be say the numbers 5 and 14. Do they have any factors in common other than 1? Mm -hmm. Is there a number that can go into 5 and 14 other than 1? No, so these guys are relatively prime. But when we talk about writing fractions in lowest terms, sometimes you'll just see the phrase simplify, or you might see it written as reduce. If you're looking in the book, it'll say, write the fraction in lowest terms. For example, if I were to give you the fraction 12 fifteenths. 12 over 15 is not in lowest terms because 12 and 15 have a common factor. There is a number that will go into both 12 and 15. What is it? Three. Three. And as we saw in class last time, we saw that we can write an equivalent fraction by multiplying top <coughs> and bottom times the same number or dividing top and bottom times the same number. So we could divide top and bottom by what number? By that common factor of 3. Remember this is what we did? Now are, are we dividing this fraction by 3? No, we're dividing it by 1. Somebody remembers. Yay! Happiness increasing. Yeah. So what's 12 divided by 3? 4, and what's 15 divided by 3? 5. So I'm saying that 12 over 15 is the same as 4 over 5. Do you believe me? If you don't, let's just draw a little quick picture for you, and hopefully I can do this without making a mess. I know how much you guys love my pictures. Oh, don't. Just stop. Stop. If I were to talk about, well, I've divided this into, okay, this is horrible, but this is supposed to be fits. They're not even, but close enough, right? Gabby, don't even. <laughs> Let me see what you've got. That's right. Better than that? Oh, snap. <laughs> now, if I talk about 12 fifteenths, that means I'm talking about coloring in 12 of these guys, right? 12 of the 15? Do you all agree? I've got four columns of three rows, so that's 12 out of a total of 15. So you see that 12 out of 15 is the same as me coloring in 1, 2, 3, 4 out of the five bigger chunks here. Do you all agree? It's the same amount. These are equivalent fractions. But 4 over 5, 4 fifths, is reduced from 12 fifteenths. Because I divided by that common factor. Now, here, uh, never mind. I'm just going to give you another example and let's see what you guys can do with this. If I were to give you 40 over 90, 40 ninetieths.
is there a factor that's common to both of these that you can see? Ten is common to both of them, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you could divide top and bottom by ten, but here's another way of looking at it. Forty can be rewritten as four times ten because those are the factors. One way of breaking it down, right? And I could break down ninety as what? Nine times ten. When you have everything written in terms of multiplication, your math can be easy. What is 10 over 10? 10 over 10 is 1. So what's 4 over 9 times 1? Isn't that just 4 over 9? So let me show you the way that we would have done this problem like the last guy. An alternate way of doing this is you say, okay, I've got 40 over 90. And you guys would say, oh, there's a common factor of 10, so I'm going to divide both the numerator and denominator by 10. And what's 40 divided by 10? 4. And what's 90 divided by 10? 9. 4 over 9 is in lowest terms because is there a number that goes into both 4 and 9? No. So that's it. <coughs> now, the w reason I showed you this right here is because we're going to be seeing this a lot more. You guys will look at this and go 10 over 10 is 1. These reduced and you just get 4 over 9. What if I have the example 7 over 35? Is this fraction in lowest terms? And if you say it's not in lowest terms, then that means you're saying that there is a number, there's a factor that goes into both 7 and 35. So Dennis, you say 7 goes into both of those, right? Okay. Two ways of doing this. If I do it the way we were doing in the last class, you would say, I can divide the top and the bottom by 7. Because what is 7 over 7? Mm -hmm. That's 1. If I divide by 1, it doesn't change the meaning. It just changes the way that it looks. What's 7 divided by 7? It's what? One. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 35 divided by 7 is? 5. Now, Rhonda, let me ask you this question. Is the 1 here necessary? Yeah. Yes. Do you all agree it's necessary? <laughs> if you don't have the 1 here, and you just have this, what's that number? Five. Is 5 the same as a fifth? No. 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 And if you go to specs, you know that this is not the same. Because you could buy a fifth, <laughs> or you could buy 5 liters. A fifth of a liter is completely different from 5 liters, right? Yeah, some of you guys are like, oh, I know this because I read the recipe wrong. <laughs> My punch was so strong. <laughs> well, you guys really know alcohol. You guys like, I made a good connection there for some reason. Now, <laughs> let me show you the alternative way of working this problem. Look at this in terms of prime factors. Seven is just... 7, right? Because 7 is a prime number. How does 35 break down using prime factors? What's the only way to break down 35 you know of? 5, five. five times 7, and both of those guys are prime. Look at this. You have 7 divided by 7. What's 7 divided by 7? One. <coughs> 1. Now, is 1 a number that just goes away, like 1 doesn't matter? No. no. So, you have left a 5, but the 5 was in the denominator, right? Mm -hmm. That's where that factor was located. And in the numerator, there's a 1 here. Now, you may say, I'm not sure I totally agree with you, Mr. Craig, and that's fine. I said 7 is just 7, right? If it makes you feel better, you could say that this is 1 times 7, right? Did I need to write the 1 there? No. But if I'm going to write it this way where I see these factors that get to reduce, it will help you get the correct answer of one-fifth much more accurately. you have a question? 
Okay, let's do let's do one more. Let's do 72 over 84. When you see a fraction, your first question should be, is this guy in lowest terms? Is there something that goes into 72 and 84? And you know what? It doesn't have to be the greatest common factor. It doesn't. If you can find something that goes into these guys, then you could divide the top and bottom times that number you make the fraction smaller, and then you start getting back into the numbers that you are more comfortable with. So what do you know for certain goes into 72 and 84? Two. Two, right? Because eight's not going to work. Eight goes into 72, but eight doesn't go into 84. But let's do two, right? That was low. You really heard that. I hear. Sometimes I have Batman hearing. I'm bad, bad. Sometimes I just don't hear things very well. What's 72 divided by 2? That's 36. And what's 84 divided by 2? 42. 42. Now I've got 36 over 42. These guys are both even again. So I know that at least 2 goes into these guys, but there might be something larger that I see now that maybe I didn't see before. What could go into both of these guys? 6 goes into both of these. So I can divide both the numerator and the denominator by 6. So 6 divided by 6 is 1, so that's what I'm doing. I'm dividing by 1, or a form of 1. So 36 divided by 6 is, and 42 divided by 6 is 7. Now what about 6 and 7? Can I do more with that? No, because 6 and 7 are, what was that fancy phrase? Relatively, Relatively prime. prime. They have no common factors other than one, so you are done. Now here's a little interesting tidbit for you. You took out a factor of two by dividing by two. You took out a factor of six as well, right? So what do you think was the greatest common factor to both 72 and 84? If you took out a factor of two and a factor of six. No. Not 6, but if you took out a 2 and then you took out a 6, you could have taken out yeah. a 12. Because what's 2 times 6? 12. So if I divide each of these guys by 12, 72 divided by 12 is 6, and 84 divided by 12 is 7. But did you have to know that 12 was the greatest common factor? No, you can do this piece by piece.